All right, so what I'm planning for this video is to show my exact process of everything I do related to an NFL game. Yes, this is for the Super Bowl, but it's generally just for everything. I don't know if I'm going to have a finalized lineup by the end of this. I'm assuming that this might be like a 40, 45 minute video, maybe even longer. Uh, but I just wanted to go over everything that I do, and then just we're going to start from there. So for me, where I'm at, when I look at the Super Bowl and stuff, I'm, and yet again, because I'm playing a lot for NASCAR, I really just, I'm not going to be playing a ton for the Super Bowl. It's probably going to be like $150, $200, somewhere around there. I don't imagine it's going to be anything more than that. Okay, I know we're starting with concept, contest selection, which is weird, but I need to show you where I'm at because then it'll explain why I do certain things I do, why I don't do certain things I do. And so for me, I play one line, and I don't build lineups for specific contests. My brain just doesn't work that way. I try and build the highest scoring lineup I can, and I enter that <laughs> in everything. And so when I win or land or do well it caches in everything and stuff i don't build specifically for certain lines two major things here is that one i haven't even really looked at the salaries and stuff yet or the contest just knowing that this is the super bowl very similar to week one nfl pricing is usually softer we have an influx of new players for this specific weekend and so we have an influx of lower entry contests we have more single entry contests than normal like look at all these 150s and all these single entry hundred dollar ones like we typically don't have that even if it's you know one three thousand one eleven hundred you know a five hundred man contest whatever like we still don't even have those on regular weeks and so clearly there's more volume there's more interest there's more players playing here and so for me typically we're just gonna look for any single entry under 30 here and i just want to take a look of what i would be playing and so for me very easily probably probably following this probably going to reserve an entry in both the 27s the 12 the 5 the 3s these are a bit bigger than i necessarily want to i would actually probably skip the 5s i i want to do two things so one what i'm purposely trying to do is look f where the influx of new players is, are is going to go and so like this $3 entry we'll probably have at least 3 to 4 more small $3 entries of less than 4000 people over the course of the next couple days certainly saturday Sunday all over the place like that's kind of where you know my hundred and fifty two hundred dollars will be it'll be in like three it'll be in, in entries under than under under like 30 bucks and stuff because like yes we have a lot of good like fifty dollar single entries and stuff that'll constantly be refreshed and changed and you know we bring this up and we have you know like all these are great contests and they pay out fantastic I just don't want to deal with playing against these guys, man. It, it, I mean, this contest would probably be one of the toughest things to actually win, this $100. Everybody who's anybody is in this contest. It is most likely them putting their best lineups in. Like, I just, I'm trying to avoid that. I'd like to try and play against as many, you know, uh, amphibians and, and low players as possible here while I still have access to the, to the smaller um, ones. And then same thing here. I'd like to try and chase three maxes as well so i'd probably do this twenty dollar probably this eight because it's under four i try and typically try and find contests that are under four thousand dollars i'm more comfortable with that this three max five thousand i'll fit into that certainly the three dollar and so when i'm looking at this i'll probably end up having like 20 something contests 25 30 contests and stuff so like there's for me there's no reason for me to be like well i need to you know build one specific contest for i gotta take this phone call real fast sorry all right i was on the phone for probably like a good while i don't remember exactly what i was saying the point i was going to wrap around to was typically all the contests i'm trying to play are around the three thousand to four thousand person <clears throat> size um kind of again while like I, I just run just i'm just running one line or whatever um I'm going to bring up Savers and I want this to load first. So, like, <clears throat> I just kind of hop in, in here to be able to look at this and stuff. So, for me, when I – first off, I haven't seen projections, haven't looked at prop lines, haven't really done any of that stuff. I just want to look and take a gander and see kind of where everybody's falling in at. I'm assuming, as I said, we have softer pricing, but we also have, you know, true star players and stuff. So, we have, like, McCaffrey, Mahomes, and Kelsey and stuff. 
And if you were in the Treaty of Fist Discord and stuff, you would you're at least aware that I was just on Kelsey during the playoffs. Uh, I was like, if I was if I had to do a show, if I had talked to people, I'd just be like, just play Kelsey, man. He's regressing. He hasn't shown any, you know, good scoring opportunities and stuff. Like he hasn't hit value recently. People were getting off them. And nobody was playing Kelsey the last two weeks, and he's gone off, and, like, that's kind of the worst-case situation for the Super Bowl. I was hoping he would still be, like, underperforming so we could just jam him in. Third highest, going to be popular, like, clearly being used. Like, just the down months or the down weeks were just down weeks. That happens with these these players. That's also why, I'm like, I really wanted the Bills to make the Super Bowl because I would have just lost my entire life savings on Stephon Diggs because I would have just kept playing uh, Stephon Diggs, hoping he would have a resurgent like Kelsey. Anyway. So when I'm here, I understand going in that we're most likely not having an expensive captain in this situation with the pricing that these guys have. We're looking at 15000 for both quarterbacks and Kelsey. We're not playing McCaffrey captain. We understand that. That's just not going to be viable. And we can run. I'm actually going to do that as we kind of talk through so I can just get this here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's just have this kind of run in the background, and then we can use this to answer any questions or things I might be looking at. So let's just kind of change these two things here so we can just run some lineups real fast. We're going to leave this open, mainly because I want it to use as many players as possible and just have this built in the background. We'll look at it to confirm or deny whatever I'm coming up with here. But when I look at the pricing here, this is a situation where we're most likely not using an expensive captain because outside of these situations where they actually go off for like 45 non-captain points like with McCaffrey the only way I see McCaffrey being viable is if he has you know a 44 a 33 type of day like clearly 51 you're gonna need him Mahomes yet again we're seeing that not necessarily looking at prop lines but I'm most like I would assume that he throws two touchdowns in this game one and a half to two touchdowns. I don't believe we're going to see three from him, as we haven't seen three in a very long time. Now, I'm not using that base of like, well, looking at the average, you know, his 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 touchdowns are lower than normal. I'm just like, projection-wise, probably one and a half to two touchdowns. Don't even know if he gets to 300 yards by how they're having to utilize the offense with the lack of just absolute uh, receivers to use. It's literally Kelsey pacheco and rice and that's it nobody else can really do anything and we're seeing that they're not necessarily throwing the ball nearly as much as they used to at least in previous years the reason why that's important is because it makes a catch receiver uh, what is it a catcher i uh pass receiving option in the captain position from either team as the most viable captain for this event mainly due to the pricing that they offer mainly due to the uh, floor and ceiling that they have. And the reason why I'm saying that is Kelsey, Debo, Acheco, Acheco, Ayuk, Pacheco, and Rice are the main contenders that I would want to use for the captain. And when you start building lineups, we're trying to get as many of the, we're trying to get as many scores in the lineup as possible. Okay. And just very quickly, like if you're paying up all the way and you pay up for like, we're going to use McCaffrey because this is the biggest example. We already use McCaffrey. We're already looking at a low salary uh, for everybody else. And so even we haven't even gotten like other quarterbacks and stuff. We're already pretty tight on the salary. That's not necessarily what I want to deal with. Kelsey is probably the best discount of the expensive guys off of McCaffrey and uh, Mahomes. And you'd have to play these guys together. We're still in the same situation here. So just eyeballing and looking at it, you know, using Rice or or Pacheco. You combine them with Mahomes because, like, you know, Pacheco has been getting a lot of dump off passes and stuff. And due to the likelihood of Mahomes in my head doing one to two touchdowns, it would lean to Pacheco probably scoring close to 15 points, if not a bit higher, which is right where he kind of sits normally. And that's typically what we're wanting to root for. Kind of similar to how I view esports and stuff. You either want the most, exp- you, you want the best scorer in the captain position, or the best point per dollar outside of like the top three most expensive guys and Pacheco and Rice are, are looking to be that for Kansas City. And specifically because you can play these guys together. 
I'm going into this assuming I'm going to have to play a value at like 800, 1200, 1800, somewhere around there. We have use check all of these bombs from Kansas City. And for this, it doesn't matter who we're with. This is going to be directly salary related of who we end up going to. Gray being on the field more, actually being utilized in two tight end sets by the Kansas City Chiefs. Probably the better of these options. Use check because, like, you can see how I'm building. I'm most likely not getting to McCaffrey. I just don't think it's going to work unless he scores, like, 30 or, or more points. Um, I fully believe that San Francisco is going to have to beat the Chiefs by going through the air, by actually getting Brock Purdy to do something. So the use check play, similar to, excuse me, similar to how McCaffrey didn't get necessarily injured but bummed up on one of the later drives in the previous game. They took him out just for, you know, literally a play, and Mitchell got in there and scored the touchdown. Same thing with use check. Mitchell was McCaffrey's direct backup, but we've seen use check be used on the goal line before. We've seen him get snaps in the red zone before, like him being $800 because I'm not using McCaffrey would be a direct pivot. Like that make that makes a lot of sense for me. Like I'm assuming that I'll probably end up using use check. And I'm also going to check and see looking at projections what happens when I project him for 0 points. Let's say he doesn't do anything. How does this line compare versus just regular lines and stuff? And so I would assume that something like this is probably going to be what I end up going for. When we're looking specifically at probably leverage, and yet again, I'm recording this on Tuesday, way early in the week. Yet again, a prerequisite for the weekend. Things that you should be thinking of before you get into the situation of, of uh, playing or building for this uh, game. And also, who cares? Who, who gives a shit what teams they are? Who cares about these players? I, it doesn't matter. We're here to make money. Who, who cares who these people are? Um, when we look at Rice, very similar to Kelsey, you want to play... DFS rewards you by playing people who are on a downswing, who the public isn't high on, who um, just gives you leverage and at a, at a great value. And so for me, yet again, I just made the, the case on Pacheco of you know, how he's being utilized, the points that he's been scoring, what that type of build gives you. If you feel like you need more, I'm going to argue Kittle as well, but the same thing that I'm saying here can be applied to Kittle. But my my three primary um, interests are these three here. So when we look at Rice, yet again, what is the public going to do? How are these like shitters entering this game, uh, building lineups like four minutes before lock? You know, they're hanging out with their buddies at the bar. They're hanging out with their buddies at Buffalo Wild Wings, whatever. Like throwing together lineups with yet again the like lower entry you know five or like twelve five and three dollar contest like that is where majority of that audience is going to go uh because they're just going to get slaughtered in like anything more expensive or anything bigger than like four thousand people in the contest how are they going to build i would assume that most people understand that like or like first off like quarterback captain stack in the team whatever what is the public going to do I would assume that a lot of people are going to be high on Kelsey for good reason. I would probably lock Kelsey into the flex, but I think a lot of the public is probably going to want to try and get him into the cap, the captain, or just have like the three studs. Like you, a lot of people are going to want these three guys. Excuse me. I'm not trying to burp every seven seconds. I was not doing this on the phone either, so like just unfortunate digestive system timing here. So if the public is going to build this way. and I get a direct discount to Pacheco or Rice, and that would make a lot of sense, you know, the offense is funneled through very few players in terms of the Kansas City side. We're seeing that, like, where are we at? We're seeing that Kelsey is, is clearly the main, where are we at, boys? Jesus Christ. We're seeing that Kelsey is, duh, primarily the main target. We're seeing that the first read, if it is not Kelsey, it's typically to Pacheco. Okay, either running or dump off pass or check down, whatever the case may be. And so it I treat Pacheco as a wide receiver. That's just how it is. I that's how I'm that's rice. That's how I'm looking at, at Pacheco. Because he's offering you want running backs who are offering targets, specifically in situations to where like we gotta throw it to the good players. We actually have to be here. And if he's not, 
catching the ball. He's usually typically running the ball pretty well. Like Pacheco is probably the safest play on here. And um, head to head, like head to head between him and Rice is probably honestly what I'm going to have to be uh, debating when we get here because I am highly concerned that Rice ends up scoring right at 15 points and Pacheco would probably end up scoring like around 19, 20. And I just feel like Pacheco is probably the better play. But you can see the same build that's going on here. And so, yet again, if you need that extra salary and stuff, you go to use check and then you can get to IU. Like this is this is a build that I would want to try and play. This would most likely be a build that I would want to go to. This is like I would I'm, this is an example of one that I would probably play if I was like not gonna run anything, if I was just building this here, like what makes sense? We have literally the entire offense for Kansas City. We have Brandon Ayuk, who is going to have to be utilized off of the more popular Debo Samuel play. If you want to go Kittle, whatever the case may be, I would primarily try and stick away from the mid-range just because that build doesn't necessarily make sense when you're trying to fit in all these guys here. Like, this is a line that makes a lot of sense to me. And tr truly be choosing between Pacheco and Rice in this situation is... Uh, it's probably what I'm gonna try and figure out here. Like I don't think, yeah, you can. Yeah, so like this would be this would be. I'm gonna tell you right now. Look, full transparency. Unless shit changes, this would probably be the line I run in the Super Bowl. Um, Brandon, you're using all your salary. I don't give a fuck, bro. Like who cares? I'm playing. I'm trying to aim to be with an audience that are is like true amphibians that just don't know what they're doing. Like this, this is the line that I'd want to play. And so even now, I'll go and check and see how this line is performing here. But now that we did this, now that we've kind of seen where I would go to, why I would go, why I would go to this situation, what's causing me to go there, I'm understanding that I'm getting that I'm that I would be fading McCaffrey just because I can't find a lot of things that work, and so let's we're gonna pause this real fast. I gotta do some calculations real fast. So anyway, the reason why I paused is I just wanted to manually calculate kind of what this projected lineup would score and that this is roughly scoring without use check scoring anything this is roughly a 93.5 point projected lineup in comparison to the current saber sims projections when we look at 93 point you know five or whatever compared to what saber sim is currently projecting their highest scoring lineups that you know i just ran earlier when i was running we're looking at lineups that are scoring right around 107 points so we are 14 points under the highest projected lineups that Saberson has. Now, let's understand why that might or may not be happening. Why Saberson is wanting to use Christian McCaffrey in this situation, in the captain. Now, yet again, this is early in the week. This has McCaffrey in nearly early week. <laughs> Dude, almost like 38% is, is like nearly half. We're just going to say it's fucking half, really. It's it's everybody trying to jam in McCaffrey and certainly just playing him. Like, getting off of McCaffrey is a direct way to get different right off the bat. So we can understand that. We can see that right off the bat. We're then seeing that, yet again, I didn't run any of this before. We're seeing that Pacheco and Rice, out of the 5,000 lines, once we get past the wild amount going to McCaffrey, the next viable captains are Pacheco, Rice, and Kelsey, and then Mahomes. Like, this is exactly kind of just what I went through, just seeing how to build the lineups and stuff. Because, like, if you're not paying up for Christian, you're able to build more balanced lineups. And so what I want to do specifically is, right now, I have it directly sorted by projected score. We're looking at 107 currently. We got some Pacheco lines coming in with McCaffrey right at, like, 106. And I would actually probably... If I was going to play McCaffrey, I would not play him in captain. I would probably build or use something like this, especially because this is no bums. This is this is a really, really decent lineup. There's nobody on here that is threatening to, to score poorly. Actually, well, you have Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. Clyde Edwards and um, Kittle, so I kind of take that back. We got some ugly-ass captain plays here. I'm just mainly looking at directly what they are scoring these guys at. So they're scoring... Edwards Hilaire as the main guy. Like, we got a kicker in here. That's a bit sketchy for me. And so what I want to do specifically is just look at what they're projecting these guys or these lineups without McCaffrey. So we have dropped nearly eight, dropped like 9,900 lineups. 
right at 94. And so the early projections would be a lineup without McCaffrey, regardless of what position he is, is roughly eight points on the field. Is roughly eight points off of, not maybe not the field, but highest projected lineups. So the reason why I'm looking through this is because I want to necessarily see what lineups they're saying are viable. And so let's find a let's find a contest we would actually I would actually play in and see kind of what how it builds and stuff. So probably not doing this one. This one is too big. We're gonna use We're gonna use the 50k blind, blind side. We got the blind side going on, man. So let's make some name up. Let's find find this here. Let's spy red zone blind. Here we are. And this one is 22 cash, top 10, 30. Okay, so we'll see about that. I think that's a good little indication. And the reason being why I chose this one, if I have a line that is projected to score well or typically cash well in this lineup against what I would argue being tougher competition tougher tougher competition um, more aggressive competition a uh, a contest that you would actually have to like pay attention and like know what you're doing in it well then this lineup should do the exact same or slightly better it's like a three dollar three max that has like four thousand people in it or whatever um and so let's go ahead and see kind of what is being advocated here and right off the bat is this uh this has two this has a brock purdy line but it does not have christian mccaffrey in it which is which is what i'd like to see you know and this is just risk risk adjusted but we're not seeing mccaffrey early in these lineups reason being more popular What's the easiest way to get different or have leverage on a contest or a field or whatever? Well, hey, like not not having the guy who is the most expensive, who is going to be owned the most, and who like can certainly go off, but like just automatically gets you different. That's what I want to see here. And so we're seeing yet again a lot of reinforcement of, of the cheaper plays wanting to be used. We're currently at 14%. Captain on Pacheco and Rice, 7% on Kelsey. So if you're actually one to pay up, and I would have to kind of, let's kind of goof around and look really fast as I kind of go through and look at things. If we were building a Kelsey line, because I thought he'd probably be more expensive, you probably not want to have Rice, probably. We're at 53. Let's just go back to use check with the big zero. You could, let's go get it here. Could probably get Ayuk and Kittle, so like that would be that'd be an interesting line. The reason I just did this because I was like, well, damn, Kelsey's gonna be lower on. Really, Kelsey? Why? Why is Kelsey being lower on after this guy is like practically doing identical work to McCaffrey, and is cheaper? <laughs> just that's interesting. And so when I'm here, kind of looking through here, what is Purdy's projected? Uh, his projection at 18 compared with 34 percent ownership we'll take take purdy out of the pool and now we might be cooking with fire here so what is this so yet again it's saying that kelsey is certainly viable popular yet again so and also yet again we need to be paying attention so with Purdy's in the McCaffrey's in. We're looking at 107, 106 projected lineups. We got roughly eight points off of that for drastically lower ownership, for drastically different um, uh, line of construction and stuff. I'm I'm worth taking that eight point difference here on projected lineups. So we got Ayuk, we got Pacheco, Cloud. That's into who is actually projected lowest right now in terms because that two hundred dollars might actually be interesting. I don't think he caught anything last week. This is when I do game log. You're like, what did he even do last week? Did he score anything? Two hundred uh, compared to use check with like three four. That's mainly what I would want to see. Anything more than that would be 
interesting. Like, use check is actually being used. Like, he's actually getting nut buffs. Like, that, that's really interesting here. When you compare that with Edward's Hilaire, probably project them closer to seven. He's probably going to get two guaranteed. I don't even know if Kadarius Tony's going to be activated for this game. Gray, yet again, actually actually being used, like actually getting targets. Been used this entire uh, season. I have played Gray in, in games that he's gotten like a lot of touchdowns with. Anyway, um, I just wanted to look at that because I saw Ray Ray. Correct, that's his name, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I don't know these fucking people. Why would I pay attention to any of these idiots' names? So we got Ayuk, we got Kelsey, we got Rice, got Kelsey, Chiefs. I don't mind Chiefs defense at all, actually. Like, the ownership is kind of busted. Because it really does seem like everybody, at least the public, and I, th I would actually probably trust these types of ownerships more in gigantic slates, like the big, like, $3 one, right? Which one is bigger, the 3 or the 4? Yeah, so it would be the 3 by 5,000, like this one here. You have nearly half a million people in here. This is probably closer to what projections would be. Like, those these public guys would want to just keep jamming in guys who are going to project well. And so, let's kind of find, let's find the lineup we made. What did we make? We had Pacheco Rice, Holmes Kelsey, Juszczyk, and Ayuk. So Pacheco Rice, let's find, let's find this and how it's doing. So we got Pacheco, we got Rice, we got Mahomes, Kelsey use check. I gotta get use check first because I can't click on Kelsey. Use check. Kelsey, what am I missing here? Brandon Ayuk. So this one is currently, which is like that's that's what I typically like to see. I want to see. A lineup that is drastically different and yet again so this rank 66 is including um, the lineups get pretty back in there let's get use check and then right yeah, took rice out so this is including every body included in the pool right i mean yeah so this has mccaffrey in it this has this has everybody included in the pool and this one's rank 66 which is what i typically like to find the sweet spot in. i want to be in the top 100 lines okay when we look at this directly with projected score we're going to see it to get knocked down to nearly a thousand because projected score we're at 98.8 Highest projected lines are 107. So yeah, it's going to be ranked down more. In terms of viability, in terms of like caching, increases significantly compared to the entire 5,000 lines we've built. In, in the contest I'm looking for, in the win rate, it gets better and better. In the risk-adjusted ROI, we see that this is a pretty viable lineup. We see that this one is actually usable, and that is with, I would actually project it with zero. So like that'd be... Four, we're looking at 96.4 points, 10 points off of the highest projected lines. This is something that I would want to use. But Brandon, you're spending all $50,000. You're not leaving salary on the table. Well, I'm not trying to win the big 15, man. I'm not trying to win this one. If I like, dude, if you're playing this here, leave like a thousand minimum off. Like you gotta build differently. I'm not chasing this. I want to be in lineups that have like 4,000 or less people in it. And this is the type of line that I would want to go to. Let's compare this one. So we have the Rice lineup and the uh, Pacheco line, which, dude, bro, I hate that I got to. I have to click that because I am a, uh, excuse me. Um, since I'm an admin on here on WordPress, I have this on there. So we looked at the Pacheco, look at the Rice line. And figure out kind of where we're at. So we got that. And then now we need Mahomes. So this one, 
yet again, kind of reiterating the same thing. So this one is a slightly lower ceiling, <clears throat> or I guess roughly identical. In turn, let's let's just take a gander real fast. So like, if you look at rice, actually, I think I can do it here. I don't think I don't think this is adjust to cap. Yeah. So when we look at rice, which is this is the distribution that the points that the sims are using, and roughly in your head, you know, you can see that this is what happens. Like, look, man. Rashid Rice is going to score like uh, you know 38 points when he when he catches both of Mahomes' touchdowns and goes for 38 yards or for like 100 yards and stuff. So we understand that, but the vast majority of his scoring is going to be done between the 10 and probably under 20. So like between 10 and 19 points is what we can look at, right? Right? That's not crazy, right? When we look at Pacheco, we're going to see it slightly, or certainly safer, and slightly higher, just slightly higher than what um, Rice has. That's why we see that Pacheco would probably be a safer play, and I think it's probably a better play over Rice, but if you needed the salary or whatever. So when we look at this yet again, this is including every lineup, all the 5,000 lineups we just made, and we look at just rough projected, very similar to where we were at with the other one. We look at the cash rate in that contest, worse than the other one. By this is, I would argue, a little significantly higher marg uh not margin i guess margin is the word a little bit higher margin than what i want risk adjusted roi the other one's in the 60s this one is a bit late and we understand walking into this that the cash rate percentage of both these lines are probably going to be one out of four type we understand that because we're not using mccaffrey if you have mccaffrey it would probably end up being like a, a lineup that's probably going to project to be in there about 50 percent of the time you know or do well and stuff, right? Like if we have, uh, let's get a McCaffrey line in here. And, uh, man, they're roughly the same, actually. That's that's pretty nuts. 29, so actually that 25% isn't that crazy. What about a Christian McCaffrey line? So roughly every line that was built has around a quarter percent chance of actually cashing in this contest. And so, yet again, that's like, man, that Pacheco line just looks better and better when we start comparing things. Um, lastly, the thing that I do want to look at is I want to look at kind of where everything's going in terms of the salary here, in terms of what plays on the bottom. 9%, Richie James, oh, I totally forgot he's even on the team. check and Hilaire are probably, I would argue, probably the Probably the more popular plays. It's really these two guys as your value plays, or you're just getting higher and stuff. I doubt, like, is James even going to carry anything? Literally, more people punting, punting down, risking somebody scoring like a zero. Like, use check should be like close to like a zero. These are situations where he actually scores a touchdown, but it's more than likely he actually scores a little bit higher than than zero with Hilaire. Probably a guaranteed two points, but. You know, that's uh, that's four hundred dollars more. And when you're down here, you're down here for a reason. You're not just down here for fun. That four hundred is pretty significant. So, as I kind of look through this, I look at kind of where the exposures are between these lines that were just ran by themselves and then ran through the contest or run through the contest and stuff. Really does see like that. I don't really see a reason to play Brock Purdy. You know, a lot of people are going to argue, and like, and they're not wrong. Like. You know, if you're playing cash, you want both quarterbacks and both running backs for, you know, specifically this one where, like, the offense is ran through McCaffrey. But getting different, playing different, building different with similar upside and certainly less uh, duplications. Like, if we act, let's actually run this and see what it would be like in the big sim. So, like, this is the, the big sim, so we'll just make it 17,000. Uh, characters long. Let's find the what is it? The fifteen, the m Super Bowl million. What is it called? Is it million to first? Yeah, it is. <clears throat> mm, let's see. Let's see. So we, when we look at the millionaire maker, and we compare these lines for that one, let's run. Let's run these sims again and look at and see how drastically different these are. And for this one specifically, we would be looking for 
load duplications. Notice I didn't really even talk about that when I'm looking at my the contest that I'm going to be playing. I don't care about being duped or not. That's just not a concern. Here, this is a situation where it is a concern. So we can look at where the duplications fall and how the builds go from there. Same thing with like a three max or three dollar three max or three dollar twenty max, hundred fifty max, like five dollar ones. Like that's when you actually do gotta start paying attention to uh, um, where they come in at in terms of like duplications. And so like this one, Pacheco Rice Kittle chasing McCaffrey chasing Mahomes is projected to be duped probably the most in this situation uh, because yet again McCaffrey is going to be very popular. Let's look at actual risk adjusted ROI for this bad boy. Where are we at here? We've got a Kittle line. So Kittle, yet again, like just not doing much. Haven't talked about him. Haven't projected that well. That's the type of play you play as a captain in the big millionaire maker. Like when you're chasing that contest, you got to play fucking stupid. That's just how it is. That's how it is. You, ha you have to play bad plays. That's how it is. That's why this would be the most... Um, one of the most more viable places because you got to try and get different. So we're seeing that clearly if you're playing a big contest, you, you're probably going to want to build for a San Francisco winning the actual game. Um, this one's actually pretty good. This one's actually really nice. I actually really like this line. And still, cash rate is pretty damn poor between all these guys, between all these ones. What is the one that... What's a what's a contest or what is a a line that is projected to cash the most? Hey, you know McCaffrey up top, forty three percent cash rate, probably gonna be very popular. This type of build, and you're paying up. You're not playing the quarterbacks. You're playing both running backs. Brock Purdy to McCaffrey, that's a quarterback in some form or fashion with the captain. Let's see. So. Where would mine kind of end up at? Let's see how drastically different it is. So we got Pacheco, we got Mahomes, we got Kelsey, we got Rice, we got use check who I'm missing. We got we got Ayuk here. Roughly pretty, still pretty good, man. Pretty good. Top, still top two hundred. Win rate is about the same. Cash rate is nearly identical to the other, to the other stuff, which is even wild because this would be this is arguing for a contest that has half a million people. You'd expect that to go down slightly, but it did not. Like this one is, it didn't. It just went down a full percentage, man. That's insane. But so this is actually like unless things drastically change between the. Uh, the week, this would probably be the lineup that I probably end up using for the Super Bowl. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. That, that's really about it. So, like, you know, I was here for, like, 40 minutes. Literally went over my entire, um, um, I guess, process from start to finish. Looking at identifying the contest I want to be in. Trying, looking at things before I even looked at projections or sims or anything. To be like, okay, well, this is probably how I would build or how I'd want to chase builds or whatever and stuff like that and then seeing that kind of backed up here it's that's uh i think i think pacheco is the way to go if he starts being really talked up which he might in terms of captains where where are we at in early ownership second highest owned but 14 i can live with i can live with that it's literally early projections mccaffrey pacheco rice kelsey then it's just no ownership towards anyone else. Um, I'm not necessarily worried about duplication, so I don't, I don't feel like the need. I don't feel like I need to really worry about it. I'm already fading McCaffrey, so that's different enough as is. McCaffrey is going to be the highest owned guy here, and uh, all I can do is just hope for him to break his leg, man. And uh, I think, I think that's probably going to be what I'm rooting for uh, in this game. Speaking realistically of who I like, who I don't like in this game, I don't like any player. McCaffrey is the only player that I actually like in the game. Like as a person, like as me as a fan watching, McCaffrey is the best athlete on the field. I would say he's better than Mahomes, and he deserves a Super Bowl. Looking at it from a DFS perspective, hopefully 
uh, Kansas City defenders uh, get smart and they just target McCaffrey's knees and break his leg, like, in the first quarter, and then they don't have to deal with him. And then I don't have to deal with him for DFS. And then, uh, yeah, that's... That's honestly probably what I'm going to root for is, is a McCaffrey injury in the Super Bowl uh, for money-wise and stuff. But uh, past that, if you guys enjoyed this, let me know. Um, and, yeah, consider joining True DFS if you aren't already. Consider supporting me through the NASCAR package if you don't already have that. And, uh, yeah, just thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps you out and gives you an early uh, look at the Super Bowl. So I'll see you guys later.